G'day guys, how are you? And welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can create your own custom clock in C Sharp. So, quick, um, quickly, the reason why I'm making this video is because about an hour or so ago, um, I wanted to be able to create my own custom time with C Sharp and not use the local systems time because my Raspberry Pi unfortunately doesn't support the Australian Daylight Savings mode. Um, so therefore, when I was deploying my application on my Raspberry Pi, the time was always an hour out. So what I decided to do is I decided to scrape some the time from the internet, and then I wanted to be able to put that into the date and time uh, standard function that C Sharp has, but unfortunately it didn't have it. Like I couldn't find where I supported it, so then I thought, okay, well I'll use a stopwatch. But then a stopwatch obviously doesn't let you start from a particular time. Obviously you could probably use a wrapper, but I didn't want to go and do all that sort of stuff. So here's a video of how to create your own clock. So let me just quickly explain. I've created a class there called clock and I'm de um, declaring a few private integers, number one being hour, number two being minute, and number three being second. And then what I've done is I've just done a public clock and I've got my parameters in there. And then of course I'm just going to say, you know, this dot hour equals hh, this dot minute equals mm, and this dot second equals ss. You don't necessarily have to put this, it just depends on sort of what you prefer. But I like to put this because I know it's within that class and not somewhere else. The next thing I'm going to do now is I'm just going to create a public um, void and this void is going to be the tick of the clock. So each time the clock ticks it's going to do something. So in this case we're just going to put this dot second right there, this dot second plus plus. And then of course if this dot second is equal to 60 then we want to say this dot minute plus plus so increments by one and this dot second of course is going to go back to double zero i'm using double zero because i'm going to do this in 24 hour time um, when i'm scraping the data off the internet the website that i am using that i've got permission from is in 24 hour time so it just makes it a bit easier and of course if this dot minute is equal to 60 then this dot hour increments by one and this dot minute goes back to double zero and finally if this dot hour is equal to 24 then we're just going to say this dot hour goes back to double zero the rest of the code should sort itself out so it should all just work hopefully <laughs> okay so now what we need to do is we need to obviously display the time so I've just done here a public string and I'm just going to write here display time so this is going to display whatever's obviously those private variables that I've created at the top there whatever they are it's going to display it so I'm just going to set the format out and how I want the clock to be read so in this case, I've just done string time equals this dot hour to string. And you might be wondering why am I putting to string? Um, I'm doing that because I want to format the integers with a D2, so it's going to show two digits. If I didn't put that, then if there was two zeros, it would only show one zero. So by putting the D2 there, it will display both the zeros on our console application. So I'm just going to do that for all of them, as you can see there. <coughs> Excuse me this dot hour equals yep, blah 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 and then once that's done I'm just going to return the time back to the console or the caller is what some people say so now that I've done that what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a static um, a sync that way it's running um, while the program's also running so some people say this is like running on another thread um, I usually just sort of think of it as it's gonna obviously stay in sync and yeah I guess in some ways it is running on another thread but never mind that so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to show you that you can indeed access the clock from anywhere within the program as long as you do it within the, well obviously that class, but you can say static clock, clock equals new clock. And we set the time here and by putting it up here it means that we can access it from wherever in our program where it's under class program. You don't necessarily have to put it there, but for those that are new to writing a class and stuff, I just want to show you guys that you can um, add that there. It's kind of like a public dim. Um, if you're from vb.net. So within our static async avoid time, I'm just going to say while true clock.tick, so it's obviously going to tick. And then we want to display what the clock's um, reading, so console.right line clock.display time. And then what we want to do here is we're going to just do await task.delay, and we want to delay it by one second, okay, because obviously the clock is going to have a one second between each tick. And then after that, we just want to clear the console. That way we don't get a bunch of, you know, times reading down the black box, if you know what I mean. So back to our static void main. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to write in time and then console.read line, okay? And let's see what we get. And there we go. We've now got a clock functioning um, from what we can see. Um, as you can see, the second there was ticking and the 
minute was there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly put this to 58. And there we go. We can see it tick over the 14 or 2 o'clock. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, leave a thumbs up. Leave a comment if you have any questions. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.